Today I am going to talk about depictions of Lizzie Siddle on screen. Last night I sat through my second viewing while I was doing some hand stitching on one of the costumes for Unvarnished of Ken Russell's Dante's Inferno which was part of a series called Omnibus on the BBC in 1967 uh, and it was Ken Russell being Ken Russell to a very large extent. At one point while posing for the murals in the Oxford Union, Jane Burden takes out a yo-yo and starts playing with it. Oh, oh, what? And then you remember it's Ken Russell and it's 1967 and you just go with it. Uh, in, in the portrayal of Lizzie by Judith Paris, I believe she said it was her, in an interview I read once, it was her first actual acting role. Uh, she had been a dancer. She brings that weird balance of fragility and strength. The film really makes a point of Lizzie's frustration with never really knowing what was going on with her, why her body was in rebellion. You know, there was starting to be some thinking that, oh, it was, you know, hysteria, which is, you know, the Victorian construct of the invalid and this thing of, of slapping a label on someone as being ill who is not actually ill and making them effectively psychosomatically ill. So it was interesting to me that Russell took this very strong position that yes, there was some chronic illness that could not be identified. What I know of the experience of a lot of people I know who deal with chronic illness, who have often spent years going to doctors being told, oh, it's stress or what any number of things that isn't something that you can say, this is what it is, this is what you do about it. And that's something that Lizzie had to deal with it all, you know, all the time. She might have a good day, she might have a bad day. There, there's no way to tell. I also just, I find Judith Paris to be inspiring uh, in and of herself because she has gone on that she has in fact created a couple of one-woman shows. This person who was Lizzie 40 odd years ago who has pursued this path that I'm following now with Lizzie as my subject. The next time you see Lizzie on screen, also at the BBC, curiously enough, all three of the examples, major examples that I'm going to be talking about are from the BBC. This one, next one was in 1975 and it was a mini series called The Love School uh, that is not available to the public in its entirety unfortunately. I had the good fortune of meeting the Lizzie in that production, Patricia Quinn, whom I met at a horror convention because she's also the Patricia Quinn who played Magenta in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And so I had the great delight of coming up to her autograph table at this horror convention and mentioning, you know, I don't know this thing that you did in 1975, I don't know what it might mean to you, but I've seen the one scene from it. There's one scene from it that's on YouTube. I said, I'm working on a one woman show about Lizzie Siddle and I've seen you know, this clip from, from uh, The Love School and her face just lit up and we chatted about it for like, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes. And she was telling me all this stuff. Um, one day she was doing uh, some sort of panel discussion with some, some fellow Rocky Horror cast members in Oxford. And she happened to bump into Ben Kingsley on the street in Oxford. And he had, he had played Rossetti to her Lizzie. Uh, and they sort of reminisced about that. And she was actually sitting on this panel in the Oxford Union, in the debating hall, looking up at the murals and going, that's me. And apparently uh, uh, Lizzie was actually involved in, in the love school. Lizzie, Lizzie was actually involved in the creation of the murals at Oxford. It was, it was so delightful to be able to have this conversation with her about this thing that she had done that she still, you know, feels very strongly about. She said she had watched it all the way, actually not watched it all the way through, even though she had hold of it for a number of years, she'd sort of watched it up to the point where she died and then stopped, which I sort of understand. And she said, and then I feel so, and, and she said she felt sorry that she hadn't watched it all the way through sooner because some of the things that happened, you know, later on in the series after Lizzie's death were just 
she was just blown away. She said, uh, particularly the performance of, I can't remember right, his, right now his name, the actor who played Morris, she was very impressed with. We, we touched at one point on the subject of desperate romantics, I can't remember why, but she said, she was called in to read for Ruskin's mother. And she said, Ruskin's mother? And the little bit that I have seen of her performance as Lizzie, uh, I wish I could see more. It's got her with the dove um, in the scene and she kept doves like many ladies did at the time. And so it's just the whole atmosphere of it and the, the dynamic between her and Ben Kingsley I really like. Then you have to fast forward to 2009 and of course Desperate Romantics which I think has brought a whole new generation of people to interest in the Pre-Raphaelites which I love. I know a lot of people have their issues with it. I have my issues with it too. I'm a firm believer that whatever people's in to a topic, if they're interested in it, they'll find the real facts, they'll find the real history, and they'll be the richer for it. If they're not interested in it, then it really doesn't matter. One of the things it does with Lizzie, which I thought was kind of interesting, is it actually kind of takes attack. The only time she's ever really sick, per se, is when she catches the pneumonia. Uh, Ophelia, cold, Millet gets sued. And then she gets over that. And after that, it's really not an issue. Her illness and her invalid status has been something that defined her in the public imagination for so long. I can see where the impulse to push that aside entirely and look at the other aspects of her came from. I have my misgivings about that because I do believe that the aspect of chronic illness is an important one to understanding her life, but the characterization that came out of approaching the story that way is amazing. She has just tremendous fire and ambition and her frustration with the other blocks that are placed in her way at every turn by virtue of her class, by virtue of her gender, are really interesting to look at. Um, and of course Amy Manson I just love. As anybody who's watching the current season of Atlantis can tell you, can be very physical, very athletic. So it, taking that strength and that dynamism and pouring it into her characterization of Lizzie really created something interesting. If you haven't seen any of these, I definitely recommend you go and check them out and see well, how other people have chosen to portray this person whose story I want to tell. Mm -hmm.